Presidential hopefuls this weekend pressed the flesh at NASCAR, We've been following you since. a farmer's market, and for five of them, the weekend was spent with fat cats at a Koch Brothers back retreat at a St. Regis resort in California. So many of you here aren't here because of any interest on behalf of your personal finances or your industries. You're here because you love America. And American politicians love them. Money helps. Money helps. I'm playing by the rules. Of the of the game, the way they, the way it was laid out, and if people don't like it, that's just tough luck. With no contribution limits on super PACs to ruin the fun, 2016ers are seeking sugar daddies. You have to raise hundred thousand dollars every single week for a full year to raise five million dollars. For a sugar daddy, you get a five million dollar check like that. The super PACs behind Ted Cruz have raised 38 million dollars so far. 95 percent of it coming from just three families, including one that got a lot of its dough from fracking. According to the New York Times, all this super PAC cash means that only 400 families have provided about half the money in the election so far. Jeb Bush's Right to Rise PAC has the biggest haul with $103 million coming mostly from bigwigs in the oil and gas industry and three former ambassadors. Marco Rubio's super PAC owes half of its $16 million pile to just two pals. Oracle CEO Larry Ellison and the former owner of the Philadelphia Eagles, Norm Brayman. Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker has $20 million in Super PAC funds, a quarter of it from the owners of the Chicago Cubs. On the Democratic side, one of Hillary Clinton's Super PACs has a $15 million vault, which is shared more evenly among big names, including $1 million each from DreamWorks executive Steven Spielberg and Jeffrey Katzenberg, as well as big gifts from George Soros and Star Wars director J.J. Abrams and his wife. Super PACs have fundamentally changed the game for 2016 presidential candidates. They have to spend a huge amount of their time not just courting voters, but courting billionaires. The big question, of course, for all these donors, what will these rich guys and gals giving these huge sums expect from the candidate who wins?